This video is the explanation video of the spinning cube project I made two years ago. I know a lot of you have been curious about how it works. After this video, hopefully, you will learn everything you need to know about the spinning cube. If you haven't seen the original coding video, check it out. And if you don't like those keystrokes, feel free to mute the video and play your favorite music instead. Before we talk about the cube, let's go back to where it all started. This idea is not originally mine. It comes from a blog post by Andy Sloan in 2006. His version was a spinning donut, which, let's be honest, might even be cooler than a cube. Thanks to Andy for this great idea. So, what's this spinning cube thing? It's just a file, cube.c, a tiny C program, about 60 lines long, that spins a 3D cube right in your terminal using ASCII characters. The trick is that it uses math to figure out where each point on the cube should go, then projects those points onto your screen. Think of it like a flipbook. Each frame is a snapshot of the cube, and when they play together, it comes alive. Let me start with the math behind the cube. We begin with a three-dimensional coordinate system consisting of the x, y, and z axis. When rotating the cube, we focus on rotating the points on its surface rather than the surfaces themselves. This rotation is achieved using three angles, A, B, and C. These angles correspond to rotations around the X, Y, and Z axes, respectively. Every point on our cube starts with coordinates I, J, K. To spin the cube, we transform these into new coordinates X, Y, Z. These matrices define how a point rotates around the x, y, and z axis, centered at the origin. To rotate a point, we multiply its coordinates, i, j, k, by each matrix, one after another. First, we need to multiply the rotation matrices around the x and y axis. I am going to speed up the animation here. Here you see only basic matrix multiplication. Once that's done, we need to multiply the result with the rotation matrix around the z-axis. Now this matrix is basically the rotation matrix around all axes x, y, and z. We could get directly from the internet, but it is better to learn how it is actually done. Now we have one more step which is multiplying the rotation matrix with the coordinates i, j, k. I am not going to demonstrate it because it is again basic matrix multiplication. Here we have it. It may look complicated, but since we started from scratch, it actually makes sense. We have matrix 1 to 3. We will apply this matrix to all points on the cube to get the coordinates of the rotated points. Now let's see how angles a, b, c rotate the surfaces around the origin. Imagine we have a static cube and we apply rotation to its surfaces. The same principle will apply when it comes to the individual points. Here you see surfaces being added to the left one by one. See how the rotation is applied to the surfaces of a static cube and the result. But in our code, we actually won't deal with surfaces instead points. I know I told it too many times, but this is the whole point. Imagine we have divided the bottom surface of the cube into n number of points. Let's select a random point on the surface with these coordinates. Let's recall the matrix we calculated and see how we will use it. In the formula, we need coordinates i, j, k and angles a, b, c. Currently we have i, j, k. And let's say we have a, b, c that increments slightly each frame. And with these values, we calculate the rotated point x, y, z. See how the result coordinates is being changed as the angles change. Even the i, j, k is the same. So we are actually creating a reference points and apply rotation to those points. We need to apply this process for all the points on the cube to get the final result. Isn't it beautiful? But do you see any problems here? 
you see the blue points actually behind the red points. Yet we see them on the front side. This is because we are not applying depth perception. We need to apply Z-buffering to fix this. Z-buffering is a technique that is used to apply depth perception to the points. Here we see three objects, monkey, cube, and sphere. Below the objects, we see the Z-buffered image. Monkey and sphere is closer to the camera, so they are darker than the cube. Each object has a Z-value between 0 and 1. In this case, probably the sphere is like 0 0.9, the monkey is 0 0.8, and the cube is like 0 0.2. Now let's dive in and see how we can implement this in the code. I will use the cube on the right for demonstration purposes. In the end, we will be able to see the working version. We begin with the angles A, B, and C. They will be set to zero at the beginning. Cube width determines the width of the cube. We can adjust it as we want, as long as the cube fits inside the screen. Width and height represent the width and height of the screen but not in pixels, but characters. Z-buffer will store the Z-values of the points and buffer will hold which character to print for each point. We can think of the screen as a grid and buffer will decide which character to print for each cell of that grid. Background ASCII code is the character printed for the background. For a better visual, I prefer using the empty space character. And we have bunch of other variables. I will explain them as we proceed. Let's begin coding our main function. First, we need to clear the terminal screen. For that, we use this print function, which is an ANSI escape code. With ANSI escape codes, you can interact with the terminal. You can change colors, move the cursor, get input, and so on. This while loop will keep the cube spinning. At the beginning of each loop, we need to clear our buffers. The memset function is used to set the values of the buffer to a given value. For our buffer, we set it to background ASCII code. For Z buffer, we set it to zero, which represents a point at infinity. Next, our double for loop comes in. We need to iterate over the points of the cube. The value 0.15 is experimental. There's no specific reason for it. You can try different values. Let's begin with just one surface of the cube. For that we call a function and pass parameters i, j, k and the character to print. In the function we need to calculate the x, y and z coordinates of the point. For that we need separate functions for each axis. That's where the rotation matrices come in. It's much easier to understand once you know the math behind it. OOZ which stands for 1 over z is used for z buffering. Now we need to calculate the projection of the point. This might seem tricky at first, but let me show you how XP and YP are calculated. Imagine this orange dot is our camera and we have a cube in front of us. Our camera is looking at the cube through a blue screen. Let's calculate how a point on the cube is projected onto the blue screen. This is actually how the camera will see the cube. Let's say we need to project a random point on the cube and let it be this orange dot. For that, we need to look the objects from the side view. The Z prime value is the distance between the camera and the blue screen. The Z value is the distance between the camera and the point. Y prime is the value where the intersection of the line and the screen occurs. And also Y value shows the distance between the point and Y axis. The intersection occurs at points X prime and Y prime. The proportion of Z prime to Y prime is the same as Z to Y. So we can find Y prime from this proportion. The same goes for X prime. In the code, we refer to Z prime as K1. This is how it looks in the code. The additional width over 2 and height over 2 are used to center the point on the screen. If the OOZ value is smaller than the already calculated point in the buffer, we update the Z buffer and the buffer accordingly. We need one more step to see the result. Printing the buffer to the screen. First, we set the cursor to the home position with this ANSI escape code. Then we output our calculated buffer to the screen using the put character function. 
For the spinning effect, we need to increment the angles A, B, and C as desired. Finally, we call the sleep function to add a delay between each frame. And there we have it. Once we run the code, we will see one surface of the cube spinning. Let's add all the other surfaces to the code. I know this spinning cube might not seem like a big deal, but everything is built from the basics. I love how art and programming meet somehow, and hope you like it. You can see the code in the description. Please comment what would you want to see next. I am planning to do more how it is done videos. Until next time.